Hello guys, welcome back to Year Starting Eco Channel. Today we'll talk about TCP protocol, and there will be some basic information about TCP. So, what is TCP protocol? TCP is a transportation layer protocol that offers a reliable, connection-oriented byte stream service. So, first, reliable means TCP guarantees that a message will reach the receiver. Regardless of link changes in the network, and connection oriented, there must be a one-to-one -one connection, unlike the UDP protocol, which allows a host to send messages to multiple hosts at the same time, which means for TCP one-to-many is not possible. And then by stream, when a user message is transmitted via TCP protocol. The message may be grouped into multiple TCP messages by the operating system. So, if the program at the receiving end doesn't know the message boundary, it cannot read out a valid user message. Moreover, TCP messages are ordered. So, when the previous TCP message is not received, even if it receives the later TCP message first, it cannot be delivered to the application layer for processing. And the duplicated TCP messages are automatically discarded. Why do we need TCP protocol? No matter we are talking about TCP/IP model or OSI seven layer model, the IP layer is unreliable. IP layer does not guarantee the deliver of network packets. The in order deliver of network packets or the integrity of the data in network packets. If the reliability of network packets needs to be guaranteed, then the TCP protocol at the upper layer, which is transport layer, is responsible. What is a TCP connection? Let's look at how RFC three zero nine three defines a connection. Simply, but certain set information used to ensure reliability and traffic control maintenance. A combination of this information, including socket. Sequence number and window size is called a connection. How can a TCP connection be uniquely identified? A connection can be uniquely identified by four fields. They are source address, source part, destination address, and destination part. The fields for the source and destination address are in the IP header and serve to send messages to the other hosts via the IP protocol. And the fields for source and destination parts are in the TCP header and tell the TCP protocol which process or which applications to send the message to. Uh, now we take a look at the、uh, TCP header. Take a look at what is inside the TCP header. We will go through some important fields. So first, source port identifies the sending port, and destination port identifies the receiving port. This is two field we have mentioned in the last chapter. And then we look at sequence number. Sequence number takes four bytes, or you call thirty-two bits. It is a random number generated by the computer at connection establishment. And it is used as its initial value and passes to the receiving host via SYN packets, with the size of the data bytes being accumulated each time the data is sent. This is used to solve the problem of network package disorder. After that, you see acknowledge number,、uh, which also takes 32 bits or four bytes. This is the number of next expected data. After receiving this acknowledgement, the sender can assume that all data before this sequence number has been received normally, and it is used to solve the problem of packet loss. This picture below shows a real example of TCP sequence and acknowledgement numbers in a TCP flow diagram. The key variable is the TCP segment length of each TCP segment sent in the section. So. The client sends the first segment with SEQ equal to one, and the length of the segment is six hundred and sixty-nine bytes. The server responds with an ACK equal to six hundred and seventeen, 
which tells the client that the next expected segment will have a sequence number is 670. The next segment the client sends has SEQ equal to 670, and the length is now 1,460 bytes. In turn, the server responds with ACK equal to the sum of 617 and 1,416, which is 2,130 in total. This cycle continues until the end of the TCP section. Again, note that the length value is from the TCP segment length, not the layer 2 frame length, nor the IP package length. Okay, so after that you'll see flux. Flux contains 9 control bits as follows. And all these 9 control bits, ACK, SYN, and FIN, are 3 important flux. ACK indicates that the acknowledge field is significant. All package after the initial SYM package sent by the client should have this flag set. After that SYN, synchronize sequence number. Only the first package sent from each end should have this flag set. After that FIN, FIN, this is the last package from the sender. All right. So after flex, you'll see the window size. Window size also takes 16 bits or 2 bytes. The size of the receive window, which specific the number of window size units that the sender of this segment is currently willing to receive. And this field is highly related to flow control and window scaling. What is the maximum number of TCP connection? Okay, server is usually fixed to listen on a local part, waiting for the connection request from client side. So only client IP and client port are variable, so the maximum TCP connection is the number of client IP multiple the number of client parts. For IPv4, regardless of IP address classification and other factors, the maximum number of TCP connection it's about 2 of the 32 times, which is the IP numbers, multiple 2 of the 16 times, which is the pawn numbers. That is, the maximum number of server-side standalone TCP connection is about 2 of the 48 times. Of course, the maximum number of concurrent TCP connection on server-side is far from the theoretical maximum and is affected by the following factors. First, file descriptor limit. Each TCP connection is a file, and if the file descriptor is full, too many open files will occur. Linux has three separate limits on the numbers of open file descriptors that can be opened. From system level to user level to process level, there are different commands to check and to modify them. And Except for file descriptor limit, there are also memory limit. Each TCP connection takes up a certain amount of memory, and the operating system has a limit amount of memory. If the memory resources are full, out of memory will occur. Okay, so these are all the basic information I think you should know and you should master because in the next video we're going to talk about TCP handshakes. Alright, so I hope you enjoyed this video and you can actually learn something. Thanks for watching.